Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Big Matt and today we're going to be calibrating an Akai GX635D. To do so we're going to need a, an MRL tape and a frequency counter. We're going to connect the output of the uh, 635D to the input of the freak counter and uh, we're going to play the MRL tape, uh, the 1000 Hz uh, tone section of that tape, and then monitor the the uh, frequency counter to make sure that uh, it's within specs. So this is the frequency counter. Uh, the adjustments, <coughs> the, the adjustment is made on this board here behind the take up reel motor. Uh, I'm going to press play on the unit and we'll hear the tone as it's being played on the on the machine and we'll monitor uh, the frequency that we, we're reading. We should, we should see a 1000 hertz uh, signal here. MRL calibration tape, NAB equalization at 200 nanowebers per meter, 1 kilohertz at reference flexibility. Okay, so it looks like we're reading 970, 973 hertz, and the tolerance on this one is 0.5%, uh, so that, translate at, that translates to uh, 50 hertz. Uh, so it's, it is within spec, but uh, I'm going to try to adjust it a little bit, get it closer to that 1,000 mark. Okay, so we're going to leave it there. Uh, okay, next I'm going to drop the speed down to 3 and 3 quarter inches per second. We're going to play that same signal, and this time we should read 500 at the uh, at the frequency counter. And if it's a little off, we can make the adjustment on the second potentiometer on the same board. Okay, next we're going to check the playback head alignment. Uh, I'm going to use the old scope to check the left and the right channels to make sure they're in phase. Uh, so when I press play, we should see two sine waves. One kilohertz at reference flexibility. Okay. So we have our two sine waves. Try to stable them out a little bit. Okay, now we're going to add those two signals together, and we should get a 45 degree angle. Okay, and that's a very good signal, certainly within tolerance. If, if, the, uh, if the heads were out of alignment, you would get more of an oval, oval look to that uh, signal. Wind back a little bit. Action take NAB equalization at 200 nanowebers per meter. One kilohertz at reference flexibility. Okay, and that's a really good signal. Uh, if it were out of alignment, it would look more like this. I'm moving the tape with my hand, but that's that's a very good good signal. Okay, so the next step is to check the output level and the forward playback mode. We're going to be using that uh, test set on top of the oscillator, oh, excuse me, on top of the oscope to check this uh, signal. We're looking for a zero dB deflection when I press play, and we're monitoring the, this is going to be the left channel. I have the output set to maximum, and I'm using the MRL calibration tape. MRL 
kilowatt calibration tape, NAB equalization, at 200 nanowatts per meter. One kilohertz at reference flexibility. Okay, so it's around minus one dB for the left channel. I'll check the right. And the right channel is right at zero dB. Okay, so I found the left channel was a little low on playback in the forward mode. I've replaced all the transistors on this unit already, so it's normal that some of these uh, units, have, some of these uh, transistors, have, will have to be calibrated. So uh, this is VR3, and it's going to control the left output in the forward mode. And so we're going to go back to the uh, to the other image, and we're going to begin that calibration. Okay, so now we're going to monitor the meter again. I'm going to put the unit in uh, forward play and adjust VR3 and bring the signal up to 0 dB. MRL calibration tape, NAB equalization, at 200 nanowatts per meter. 1 kilohertz at reference flexibility. So it's running about neg 1 dB, so I'm going to just crank it up just a little. You can see you got it right at uh, 0 dB. And I'm going to do that for uh, forward and the reverse left and right channels. Okay, so next we're going to adjust the VU meter for 0 dB as we're playing on reference tape. Uh, the left and the right VU meters are adjustable individually with VR5 and VR5B. So when I press play and we're listening to the reference tape, the meter should read 0 dB. If not, I'll make a slight adjustment to them to bring them in tolerance. Calibration tape, NAB equalization at 200 nanowatts per meter. One kilohertz at reference flexibility. We'll start with the left side. It's a little high, it's reading 1 dB. So it should bring it down to zero. Okay, now it's uh, VR5. VR5B will control the light channel. It's a 1 dB also, so we're going to bring it down to zero. And that's it for the VU meter adjustment. Okay, and I'm going to uh, put the tape in reverse and play that play it uh, in the reverse mode and make sure that the VU meters still remain at 0 dB. Okay, that's reverse. We'll go back into forward. Okay, so the next step is to check the record uh, record level on the left and right channels in the forward and the reverse modes. I've checked them already and they're they're kind of high. I've uh, adjusted the right the left channel on the forward mode already uh, and I did that by adjusting VR2. The right channel is a little high also and that's going to be VR2B located here. And uh, I'll swing the camera over to the meter. And right now I have a 1k hertz tone at 0 dB applied to the uh, 635D and uh, if I press the tape source switch uh, we'll, we'll read that 0 dB signal coming into the machine okay and the goal now is to make the uh, the right channel I'll do these one at a time this is the left channel I've done that one already and this is going to be the right channel coming into the to the uh, test meter, and uh, we're going to monitor the recording from the oscillator into the tape deck and out back out to the uh, to the meter, and we're going to look for a zero dB signal, and it's very high. So I'm going to bring down that VR2B to zero dB. And uh, now this is the the uh, this is the what's coming back from the tape, and this is what's this is what's going on to the tape. So this would be the source, and this is the actual recording. And we need to do that on the left and right channels in the forward and the reverse mode. I've done the reverse, uh, excuse me, the forward mode already, and I'll follow up with the reverse mode to make sure that they're 